Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in motion in one dimension. In this lesson, we're going to carry on going through graph questions and possibly do um, one or two equations of motions or combination questions. And then we've, when we finish that, then we will move on to energy. So let's see how we go. So this question, all these questions are old exam paper questions that I found in various sources. This question says the velocity versus time graph of a track. Now remember what I said to you, always check to see what type of graph it is. In this case, they've been very nice. They told us it was a velocity versus time graph of a track is plotted below. It says calculate the distance and the displacement of the track after 15 seconds. Okay, so in your exams, when you eventually get to the point where they are going to ask you about how to do different questions, they are going to say things like, without using the equations of motion, or they're going to say, only use the graph, okay? So in this case, they are assuming that you will use the graph and only the graph to work this out. So now remember what we learned, okay? We learned that since velocity equals change in displacement over change in time, then we can say that therefore that delta x equals V delta T. And if you look at this shape alone, never mind the other shapes, you will realize that this is V, this bit here is V, and this bit here is delta T. So what we are looking at there is the area under the graph. So the area under the graph is going to give us our distance or our displacement. Okay, our distance or displacement. And then the other thing we need to think about is what is the difference between distance and the difference between displacement? Now distance is the total, dis the total, how far we traveled, the total number of, in this case, meters, the total number of meters we traveled, right? Whereas displacement is how far we are from where we started. Displacement equals how far we are from our starting point. Okay, so let's start off by working out our distance. Now the distance, like we said, is the area under the graph. So let's just clear all the ink and let's start again. So we've got obviously this bit here, which is a triangle. So it'd be a half times the base, which is five, times the height, which is four, plus, uh, let's go green, this area of this rectangle, which is going to be four, that's the height, times by this length here, but this length is 12 minus five, which equals seven, okay? So that's multiplied by seven, plus um, this bit here, which is again is a triangle, is a half times the base of two, times the height of four, okay? And then we've got plus the final bit, plus, now remember we're working out the distance now, we're working out the distance. So working out the total bit that he covered, in other words, however many meters he traveled, right? So if we do that, we add this bit, okay? So it's plus half for the triangle, half for the base, and then we don't care that this is a negative because the fact that the distance is a scalar. So therefore this is two. Right, so let's add that up. Let's go back to red. Five times four is 20 times a half is 10 plus four times seven is 28 plus, uh, what was this blue? Um, these cancel and you're left with four plus, and this is purple, um, these cancel and you're left with a half. So the total is 10 plus 28 is 38 plus 4 is 42, 42 comma 5, 42 comma 5 meters. So that is his distance, the distance he traveled. Now if we want to work out the displacement, 
we have to realize that what is actually happening over here in the purple bit is that he is going backwards. The track is reversing. He is going backwards. So that's actually going to make us closer than to the place that we started, okay? So what we actually have to do now instead is we still have the 10 going forward and we still have the 28 going backwards, I mean going forwards, and we still have the 4 going forwards, but not bat, 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 bat. We are now going backwards by that half. This bit here is going backwards. I don't know why I made it green. Um, let's just fix that. That's purple. Going backwards, right? So therefore, that is still going to be 10 plus 28 is 38 plus 4 is 42. But now we are minus in this half, so it becomes 41,5 meters. And then, because it's a displacement, we have to go forwards. We have to give it a direction. Always have to give it a direction if it's a vector. Right, now let's do the next question. Oh, this looks interesting. Okay, so it says a motor car is traveling along a straight road and it goes through a speed trap. Okay, at the exact instant that the car passes the speed trap, the traffic officer sitting on her motorcycle at the side of the road sets off from race. Okay, so this point here is where they pass the, where he passes the traffic, um, the speed trap and where the motorcyclist starts. Because remember this is motorcyclist and this is motor car. Okay. When she caught up with the car, the officer ordered the driver to stop and he immediately slowed down to a stop, right? The graphs below show the motion of the motorcycle and the motor car for the moment when the car passed through the speed trap, from the moment. So yeah, we've got the car going at 40 meters per second and then slowly he slows down because the motorcycle has told him to slow down, right? Yeah. The motorcycle sees the motor car going past, speeds up, goes at a constant velocity, catches up to the motor car, and then says, hurry, slow down. And then she also slows down. Okay. So now it says 6.1. Describe the motion, no displacement seat of the motorcycle from A to D. Okay. So it's only three marks allocated for this, but there's actually too few marks if you ask me. What really needs to happen is this needs to be more marks. The simple reason that this is actually quite a detailed explanation you need to write. And if this was an exam situation, you would actually have to write all this down. You would have to say the, the motorcycle does the following. From A to B, it accelerates at a constant rate, you don't need numbers, constant rate, okay, from, from zero to 50 meters per second. Then from B to C, the motorcycle um, is going at a constant velocity of 50 meters per second, oopsie, and then from C to D, the motorcycle decelerates, or you can say it negatively accelerates, or that it slows down. If you guys are struggling with decelerates, you can just say it slows down, okay? at a constant rate until it stops. There you go. Okay, but that's the type of information you need, right? Happy with that? Let's move on. Now it says, tick. Using the graph, calculate the acceleration of the motorcycle from A to B. Okay, so it says using the graph. So they do not want you to use equations of motion. They want you to use 
the graph, which means that we need to use the gradient because acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, which in this case is going to be the gradient. So we are going to say it is this velocity here, which is 50, minus the original velocity, which is zero, over the time, which is 10, minus zero, which works out to be five meters per second squared. And then obviously it is forwards, okay? Because it's an acceleration, which is a vector, which means you have to have to have a direction. Right, let's move on. Now it says use an equation of motion. Calculate the acceleration of the motorcycle from C to D. Ah, okay, so now we need to use an equation. Okay, so now if we look at from C to D, do we agree that VF, equals zero, vi is the initial velocity, which is 50. The acceleration is what we're trying to calculate and delta t equals what? Well, that goes 25, 30, 35, 36, 37. So that's 37. So that's 5, 10, 11, 12. So the change in time is 12 seconds. So we could use the equation vf is equal to vi plus a delta t. So we're going to say vf minus vi over delta t is equal to a. So the final velocity is 0 minus 50 over 12 is equal to the acceleration. And we need to pop that in and get it on. And we go minus 50, 50 divided by 12 equals minus 4.17. So the acceleration, acceleration is minus 4,17 meters per second squared forwards. The minus is showing us that it's slowing down in the forward direction. Right, now let's just erase some stuff. So now it says, use the graph to determine how far from the speed trap the motor car was stopped. Okay, so remember this is a velocity versus time graph and we're looking at displacement, right? We want displacement. How far is displacement, okay? So we want the displacement. Velocity is equal to delta x over delta t. Therefore, delta x is equal to v delta t which equals your displacement, okay? So the area under the graph is going to give us the displacement. And it says use the graph, okay? So we've got the first area is a, a rectangle. So we could go, um, okay, fine, that we can do, it's pretty easy. We can say the area, this delta x, is going to be 25, multiplied by 40 plus a half times by 12 times by the 40. Okay, so that is going to be 25 times 4 is 100, so that's 1,000. Okay, plus that becomes six and six times 40 is 240. So that's 1,240 meters. So the motor car traveled 1,240 meters before it was stopped. Okay. Now it says the speed limit on the road is 120 kilometers per hour. By how much was the motor car exceeding the speed limit? So what do we need to do? We need to convert this 50 meters per second into kilometers per hour and compare it either way or we could have converted this kilometers per hour but since the answer question has got the kilometers per hour and i'm thinking we need to change to 50. so we want 50 meters per second to get to kilometers per hour so if you think about it, what do we need to do we need to melt divide the top by a thousand and divide the bottom by 3,600, which is the same as multiplying by 3,600 
divided by a thousand, tipping and timesing. So we're going to take our 50 and we're going to multiply it by 3.6 and it equals 180. So the mo motor car was doing 180 kilometers per hour, but that wasn't the question. It says, but how much was the motor car exceeding the speed limit? And 180 minus 120 is 60 kilometers per hour. Sure. Okay, it's quite fast. Right. Next question. Next question. It says, The position versus time graph below describes the motion of an athlete. Okay, so this is the motion of the athlete. This is the position. Okay, so his position changed from 0 to 4 seconds, and then what happened? Do you agree that he stayed stationary from 4 to 7 st seconds? Okay, why? Okay, I'll show you. First of all, what is the velocity of the athlete during the first four seconds? Well, remember that velocity is delta x over delta t, which is the gradient of this graph. So if they want the like, velocity of the guy for the first four seconds, it would be 4 minus 0 over 4 minus 0, which is 1 meter per second, right? forwards. But now they're saying what is the velocity of the athlete from four from t equals four to t equals seven seconds? Do you get four seconds the guy is four meters away from the start? At five seconds he's also four meters away from the start. At six seconds he is four meters away from the start. So therefore do you agree that he remains four meters away? So therefore the velocity is a big fat zero. Right, next question, 5.2. It says the graph below shows the changing velocity of an object over a 10 second period. Okay, the changing velocity over a 10 second period. Now, so with the velocity starts, do you agree? at 15 meters per second it slows down and then what does it do do you understand the velocity is a vector so if we say that this is forwards then the negative is going to be backwards so do you agree that what's happening is from a to b the person is slowing down yeah forwards okay yeah, their velocity is zero instantaneously. Then they start speeding up. They are speeding up in the opposite direction. Yeah, they are standing still. There is nothing happening. Oh, sorry, they're not. They're going at a constant velocity. Sorry, they're not standing still. They are going at a constant velocity at a constant velocity and yeah they are slowing down but in the opposite direction they're still moving okay so yeah they're slowing down forwards right yeah they're speeding up in the opposite direction yeah they're going at a constant velocity and then yeah they're slowing down so if you want to think about it as a person Person is starting at point A, right? They are slowing, they're already going at 15 meters per second, right? They go forward for three seconds. They stop briefly. Then they speed up, okay, for two, two seconds. They speed up for two seconds. Then they go to constant velocity for two seconds. And then they slow down for another three seconds. So do you see that, that yeah, they're traveling forward and all the way from B to C, from C to D, and from D to E, they're traveling backwards. And that's the most important thing that you need to realize with these graphs. Now it says, state the object's instantaneous velocity after eight seconds. The object's instantaneous velocity after eight seconds. Okay. So it's instantaneous velocity at eight seconds. 
is about minus is about 7.5 meters per second. It's about 7,5 meters per second backwards in the opposite direction, right? Now it says calculate the magnitude of the object acceleration between A and C. Now remember that acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T, change in velocity over change in time. Okay, so if that's the case, then do you agree that, oopsie, do you agree that we need to use the gradient, okay? So they want the change, they want the acceleration from A to C. So we're gonna call this point two and we're gonna call this point one. Okay, sorry. And we're gonna say that this here is minus 10, minus 15, all over five minus zero. So therefore, that magnitude of acceleration is going to be minus 25 divided by five, which is gonna be minus five meters per second squared. So there you go, now you have got the acceleration. Um, now it says calculate the object's total displacement from A to E. Okay, so do you agree, like we said, over here he's going forwards, and over here is going backwards, okay? So we let's make, well, it doesn't matter. We're gonna add the sum of all the displacements because when we multiply by the negative, it's sorted out. So remember that we're going to look at the area under the graph, okay? So the area under this graph is going to be a half times by 15, times by three plus, okay, and now we're gonna include the negative to solve the problem of the fact that it's going in the opposite direction. So we're gonna go a half times by two times by minus 10 plus a half times by two times by minus 10 plus a half times by three times by minus 10. Right, so this becomes 15 times three is 45 divided by two is going to be 22 and a half. And then this, this cancels, this becomes minus 10. This cancels with this and becomes Why is that a half? That shouldn't be a half. That's wrong. <gasps> Sorry. That rectangle. So that's just two times minus 10, which is minus 20. Minus this cancels this become a five and five times three is 15. So my total, my total, total, total is going to be 22 and a half minus, that is 3045, which is minus 22 and a half. And that's what I kind of showed you, was that he actually goes further to the backwards or further to the left or further to the east, if he was traveling, to the west, if he was traveling east, than when he's just where he started. He went past where he started by 22,5 meters. Hmm, nice question. Okay, so now let's have a look at this question. This is a very nice question. Um, admittedly, it was in the 2003 exam paper, but guys, you really need to make sure that you can do this because this type of thing is really, really important. You will also notice it says there, SC 2003 11. That's because the curriculums have changed slightly and this stuff used to be in the grade 11 curriculum. Now, however, it's been moved into the grade 10 curriculum and you need to understand it and know it, okay? Right, so let's move on. It says a car is traveling at a constant velocity, 
passes a stationary motorcycle at a traffic light. Okay, you obviously notice this pattern here. Okay, the car overtakes the motorcyclist and the motorcyclist accelerates uniformly from rest for 10 seconds. Okay, the following displacement versus time graph represents the motion of both the vehicles. So here is your car traveling at a constant velocity. Okay, you know what it's like. Sometimes when you're after traffic, a uh, traffic light, um, you might have got stuck at the traffic light and there will be um, you'll have to start again from driving, whereas the lane next to you might not have had any traffic in it, so that when the people arrive, they can just go straight through. So that's kind of what's happening here, okay? So the dude, the motor car happens to have been traveling at a constant velocity, and then when the traffic light happens to go rest, uh, green at the time that he gets the traffic light, so he just carries on, okay? Whereas a motorcyclist is stationary, okay, at the motor at the traffic light, but he accelerates uniformly from rest for 10 seconds so that he can catch up and overtake the car. Now it says use the graph to find the magnitude of the constant velocity of the car. Okay, so we know that V is delta X over delta T. So do you agree that we can use a gradient and we have two points. We have this point here and we've got this point here. So it will be delta X is going to be, I mean delta Y is going to be 300 over 10 which is 30 meters per second. Okay, so therefore we know that the car was traveling at 30 meters per second. Now it says use information from the graph to show by means of a calculation that the magnitude of the acceleration of the motorcyclist for the first 10 seconds of its motion is 7.5 meters per second squared. Now they don't say you have to use the graph. They say use information from the graph by means of a calculation. So they're saying get your information from the graph, but then you can use an equation of motion. So to work out acceleration, let's think. We've got VI, VF, A, delta X, delta T. Let's have a look. So do you agree that the motorcyclist, the information we have is that at 10 seconds or after 10 seconds has elapsed, its displacement is 375. Its initial velocity is zero. Okay, its initial velocity is zero. Um, we know that because it says the motorcyclist accelerates uniformly from rest for 10 seconds. Okay, so we want to work out the acceleration. So let's get our equations of motion. We've got Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. We've got Vf squared is equal to Vi squared. Oh, sorry, let me just fix this. Um, VI squared plus 2A delta X. We have got delta X is equal to VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. And we've got delta X is equal to VF plus VI over 2 delta T. Right, so we've what do we want? We want something with acceleration. So that is up to right. Let's just do this to get it out of the way. That's out. Okay. Then what else? We've want we've got delta X is 375 meters at the time is 10 seconds, and we've got the initial velocity. And what are we trying to work out? We're trying to work out the acceleration. We do not have VF, so these two graphs of these two equations have to go away. So we're left with this equation here. So therefore, do you see that we can say that delta x is equal to the initial velocity, which is zero, plus a half times by the acceleration, t squared, okay? And we are trying to work out the acceleration. The delta x is 375 is a half times by a times by 100, 10 squared. So we got 3 comma 75, 
five is equal to a half a, therefore a is going to be seven comma five meters per second squared. Da da! Yay! Right now it says calculate how long in seconds. How long in seconds um, it will take for the motorcycle to catch up with a car, which is point x. Okay, which is point x. Okay, now. You need to understand that the reason that they gave us that this was 7.5 meters per second squared is because there's a chance that we need it in the next equation. Okay, so let's just erase some stuff here. Okay, it says calculate how long in seconds it'll take for the car to catch up the motorcycle to catch up with a car. Do you agree that when they catch up the distance traveled by the motorcycle and the distance traveled by the car have to be the same, right? So the x of the car has to equal the x of the motorbike, okay? Now, the x of the car, we know that his initial velocity of the car is equal to zero. We know that, actually we don't know that the initial velocity of car is zero, sorry, my bad, eraser. We do know that it's actually 30, sorry. The initial velocity of the car, VI of the car, is 30 meters per second. We know that, um, Okay, we know the time for both of these is 10 seconds because it says the car overtakes the motorcycle, the motorcycle accelerates rate from rest to 10 seconds, okay? It's, oh, we want to know how long. So we're actually trying to work out how long, okay? We're trying to work out how long. Okay. Um, The final velocity of the car is also 30, um, which means the acceleration is zero. Am I right? Right, then we worked out that the, let's just change color. For the, this is all for the car. Um, the acceleration for the motorbike was equal to 7,5 meters per second squared, okay? Its initial velocity is zero, okay? Right, um, and we know that, yeah, okay. So now, we need to find an equation that works for that information. So let's go write the equations. The equations are, um, just a second, let me just erase this thing here so it's out the way for me. Okay. So we know that VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. We know that VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. We know that delta X is equal to VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. And we know that delta X is equal to VF plus VI over 2 delta T. Right. Do you agree that with this one, we've got the initial velocity, the time is going to be the same, and that's what we're solving for. The displacement is the same. It's a half, and we've got the acceleration is zero. Yeah, for this one, it would be the initial velocity is zero, and the acceleration we've got, okay, so we're going to use that equation for both of them. So for the car, for the car, we're going to say, Delta x is equal to the initial velocity of 30 multiplied by the time plus zero, okay, because there's no acceleration, so that's it. For this one, delta x is equal to 
vi, which we don't have, says so zero, plus a half times by an acceleration of seven comma five times by t squared. Therefore, we can say that we've got two delta x's that are the same because they have to have traveled the same distance over t x. So we can go 30 t is equal to three comma um, and one that's 17. Um, two goes into 17, seven times, yeah, 3.75t squared. Okay, so therefore, obviously, we're going to have zero is equal to 3.75t squared minus 3t, but obviously, we have to take out a common factor of t and we're left with 3 comma 7 5 t minus 30 that obviously goes away because we know that they both pass each other when the one was zero but now we need to find the other t so that t there is going to be equal to 30 divided by 3 comma 7 5 so that's 30 let's try again clear it 30 divided by 3.75 equals 8. So therefore, we can say t is 8 seconds. Ta-da! So t equals 8 seconds. <sighs> 8 seconds. Now it says, how far behind the motorcycle will the car be after 15 seconds? Okay. So all we need to do is find out how each far each of these have been traveling at 15 seconds and will be sorted. So let's do that. So let's just erase all of this quickly. Do you agree the car is traveling at a constant velocity, right? So if the car is traveling at a constant velocity, his constant velocity is 30 meters per second, right? So then all we have to say, well, is after 15 seconds, how far is he going to be? So the velocity, the displacement of the car, car x car, is going to be 30 multiplied by 15, okay? Which is a zero and three times 15 is 450. So that's three and it's 450 meters. That is the displacement of the car after 15 seconds. The displacement of the motorcycle after 15 seconds is slightly different. The initial velocity of the motorcycle is zero. The acceleration of the motorcyclist from year to year is what did we work it out to be? I think we worked it out to be. Oh, sure, but I can't remember. Um, what did we work it out to be? We can quickly work it out again, unless it's on the calculator. No, we did not. Darn it. Um, we said delta. <sighs> um, it's VF is equal to VF is A delta T. Yeah, so it's 375. Um, Vf minus Vi over 10, 37.5. Okay, really? Acceleration, okay, 37 comma 5. Then your, so we've got Vi, we've got A, we want to find delta x is question mark. Um, and we've got the time equals 15 seconds. So therefore, we can say that delta x is equal to a half times 37 comma 5 times by um, 15. Okay, so if we do that, we got 37 point five no let's try again point point five times by point five equals times by fifteen equals two hundred and eighty one two hundred and eighty one comma two five meters <sighs> Two five meters. So the motorcyclist will only have traveled 281.25 seconds 
whereas the um, car will have traveled 450 meters. So in other words, to find out how far they are from each other, you need to subtract 450. And you will find out that the difference is 168.75 meters. 168.75 meters. There you go. Right. Um, that's it for today, grade 10s. Join me on Monday and we will continue with maths. Have a great day.